So now I'm going to talk about how we can scale routing for the IoT. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of a trend in the IoT research community and the IoT literature to try to push a lot of the resource usage out to the device edge, to push computation, communication, um, storage to the devices away from the, the core of the internet. So this is often comes under the umbrella term fog computing um, and is enabled by protocols that support true device 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 to device communication. So those are ad hoc protocols, device to device, machine to machine, they go by a variety of names. And it seems promising because there's no central bottleneck, so you, it, it looks like it would enable better scaling than routing everything through the core internet. The other approach is to continue to extend the routing from the core internet, which uses the traditional internet backbone, where all communication, even, even between physically proximate devices, has to hit a central router. So I'm going to talk about what advantages that brings, and is it feasible to actually scale the core internet routing infrastructure for the IoT? So why centralize? That really comes down to economics and security. By centralizing, you get economies of scale. You can pool the resources of, or the money of a lot of, of device manufacturers or, or data collectors to build a better centralized infrastructure. And I think more importantly, it aligns the incentives of the people producing that infrastructure or those, those routing resources with the people that are consuming them. It's harder to charge for a decentralized model or for a distributed model. So oftentimes, the features that get built there are things that interest the developers of those features, not that interest the, not that are important for the, the consumers of it. With a centralized model, the consumers are paying, so there's an incentive there for the, the development to focus on what they need. Security, it's easier to secure a few points. When you distribute everything out to the device edge, now you have billions or trillions of devices you have to secure. And we've seen by recent attacks that that's certainly not working today. And also it enables more interesting um, sort of analysis approaches for security. I think there's going to be a trend towards using, I don't like the term, but big data-based anomaly detection um, as a way to detect threats in real time rather than having to sort of reactively detect them and then go apply traditional, say, firewall rules or other security measures. If all the routing and computation is being done out the edge, you don't have that big source of data to do that detection. Um, so we can look at, at recent examples and see that the centralized approach often wins out. Social networks, diaspora, nobody uses it. Everybody's on Facebook. Digital music, Napster, BitTorrent, most people have found it easier to use Spotify or Pandora, something like that, that's built for the, the needs of, of the paying user. Wi-Fi versus cellular, it's much easier to just have your cell phone connect to your cellular than which works everywhere, then have to go you know, get the Wi-Fi credentials for each building that you visit. In retail, of course, the, the big chains are able to sell things at a better price and, and make more money. Centralizing the routing structure also aligns to the market trends. If we look at the next 18 to, to 24 months, the dominant use, at least for industrial I IoT, is going to be aggregating data into cloud applications. The data already has to come back into the core. Looking forward two to five years, there's going to be some trend to controlling those devices. But again, that's going to be coming from the back-end analytics applications. We have to go out maybe five to 10 years to start seeing pervasive use of device-to-device -device communication. So then we have to look at, well, is it feasible to scale the, the core of the internet? One of the uh, selling points that's given for sort of the pushing everything to the device edge is that, oh, it's lower latency. It's, it's more scalable. You don't have bandwidth concerns. The, Two widest points in the, or, or most distant points in the uh, lower 48 are about 2,800 miles apart. That's only 22 milliseconds of travel time on a fiber optic cable. And actually, the core internet is distributed geographically in, in these various internet exchange points. So routing through the core is really only costing you less than 10 milliseconds of latency, which for most IoT applications is going to be acceptable. Similarly, for the total bandwidth, is the internet core fat enough? This chart here is showing the total internet traffic in petabytes per month for the past 15 years and then projecting forward uh, projections from Cisco to 2020. So they're projecting that by 2020, we'll have almost 20,000, 200,000 petabytes per month of total traffic on the internet. 
with a projected 20, million I 20 billion IoT devices at that point, if all of those were using their full narrowband IoT capacity of 10 kilobits per second, that would only be 137 petabytes, 137,000 petabytes per month of traffic. So that's well within the scale of, of where the internet backbone is growing. And so Zaptom, this forms the core of, of our IoT architecture. We exist in all these internet exchange points that are distributed around the country. Devices connect to the closest one, low latency, and we can efficiently route the traffic to whatever backend applications they need. Thank you. Thank you.